Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. Uh, in this video, we are going to review with some Abdul and get them busted as usual. You know, uh, Muslims today, there's two kinds of Muslims. Muslims who speak in the front of Muslims and those they are trying to speak Islam, let us say, Islam as it is. And there's Muslims who try to sell out Islam in, as a salesman in the West. So here, supposedly, uh, the video name, the speaker corner, brother Muhammad Khabibi Hajab on two stupid Christians. So he did destroy the two stupid Christians. The fact, nothing of that happened. However, let us see who destroy who. I'm not going to play the video, so they don't play, uh, they don't say, you know, I'm using their video. However, you can watch it and laugh. Uh, the whole point of the video, this guy is trying to prove that Islam is being just with women and women in Islam are equal to men. That's deep. That's that's deep. Now, in the same time, we see in, uh, in online videos, true scholars, not like those potatoes who go in, you know, the uh, Hyde Park, who don't even have, have even high school in Islam. Those are true scholars talking about women are dirty, women are stupid, women, we should beat them. Women, it's a, it is a teaching of, of Allah to beat the women because they are dumb. So, the question is, which one we should believe? Someone like this guy, who is, is speaking in the government TV, who is one of the highest scholars of the country of Qatar, and you know they will not hire him unless he is qualified. You know, Muslim they always ask me, "What is your what? What is your degrees? What is what is your degrees? Huh? What is your degrees?" Here we go. This is a guy. He have a degrees for sure. Otherwise, he will not be in TV, and he will not be teaching the Muslims millions in a Friday sermon. And we are lucky to have the recording because this is what they teach every day. Nothing new. I mean, you know. But we are thankful for Memory TV because they are recording and translating. Now, I'm not going to play for you the video right now. I will, I will leave it for the end so you can watch it after I finish. Now, I'm not going to make this video long. So let's go step by step and see if Islam treats the women equally. I will make a short video so you guys can see by yourself. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Chapter 4, verse number 34. This is a very well-known verse where Muhammad, in his Quran, he allowed Muslim men to be not only in charge, it says men in charge, but it said they actually it's not in charge. Qawamun, it's mean the one, the, the, the one is a qualified contr to control. The one who can, let us say, make decision for everything, not only he is, this is the guy, this is the person who have a full control. It is the men. Men is the one who have full control and women, they are nothing, nothing, nothing. And simply, this is why one Muslim man, he can have a lot of wives and he can divorce them just by saying one word, divorce, divorce, divorce. If he say it three times, she can't even get back to him unless he go and, you know, she go and sleep with someone else, which is a very stupid rule in Islam. Now, you will see here it says, and by the way, this is a Muslim translation which I do not approve at all, as you know. It says that you, if a woman, she fear, she did not do anything wrong. You know, just be careful here. The verse here is not speaking about the women. A Muslim man, he might say to you, she is committing adultery. If a Muslim woman, she is married, she commit adultery, she will be stoned to death. If she is married, all right? So this is not about adultery. It's a big fat lie. So what it is then? It says, if you fear, good women are obedience. The good women are obedient. The bad women is the one who don't obey. Now, uh, now who you fear, rebellion. See, they did not become rebellion yet. You fear. Let us say you said to your wife, make me some tea. And she said, mm, okay, that's it. That you fear that they are rebellion. There is a sign that she is not fully obedient as a slave for you. Then you are free to do any of those. Some Muslims, they say to you, it says first you admonish them. This is false. There is no first, there is no second, there is no third. It's up to you, the man, to decide which one you want to do. You can warn them. You can jail them in their rooms. Not in here. It says, then banish them to, the, to beds apart. That's not really what it says. Mean jail them in their rooms. You jail them in their rooms. It's a jail. 
and you don't want to sleep with them, it's up to you. But you want to sleep with them, you can force them to sex too. And if a Muslim man, he would say, a Muslim woman, she cannot be forced to sex, I would say to you, please hold your horses, and I will show you that a Muslim man is not only allowed to force his wife to sex, even the Prophet, he taught them to do that. But before we go, here it says, and discourage them. So you have three, any of those three choices, not three stages, any of those three choices you can do, you can start from the end. Right away you beat them. Or you can start from uh, jailing them. Or you can warn them. And they listen. So if she is obedient, then don't beat her. That's the Quran. Now this Abdul in this video is trying to convince us that Islam teach that women are equal to women and you know women are not dirty and you know men and do 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 and women do 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 and you know everything is beautiful brother and everything is wonderful and women in Islam is very much respected respected. So let us see after we read this if this is true. If we go to the hadith <coughs> In front of you, I will show you a hadith proving the rape in Islam. And here, the one is talking is Muhammad and Aisha. This is a woman, she came to Muhammad, and her story is the following. Her husband trying to force her into sex. She don't want. Whatever the excuse is, she don't want. And you can read the whole story. I'm going to post the link under the video. So for those who do not know where to find it, you can always, by the way, if you want to find something, you can copy, let us say, uh, you see here it says, I am very strong and can satisfy her. You can copy that, post it in the search engine, and you will find the hadith. As simple as that. All right. So now, uh, this woman, she came to Muhammad, and he, her husband did beat her until her skin became a greener than her clothes. And the one saying that is Aisha, not me. The one describing the color and the condition is not Christian Prince. It is Aisha, the mother of Muslims, the mother of the believers. That's how they call her. All right? And look what, look what Aisha she said. Aisha is the one saying the statement, not me, again. Uh, she said, Aisha said that the lady come wearing a green veil and complained to her, to her Aisha, of her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating, not by kissing, right? Unless her husband was the green man or a frog. It was a habit of the ladies to support each other. It's a bad habit. That's a very bad habit. And so when Allah Apostle came, Aisha said, I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman hold on why Aisha she will say no women suffer more than the, the Muslim women in town there's a Christian woman there's Jewish women there's non-believers women but Aisha she is witnessing and this is Aisha don't tell me she is a stupid you don't trust her don't tell me she don't is she not have a, has a qualification Muslims huh? she did not see anyone is suffering as Muslim women according to Aisha. Now, I agree with her. Now, here it says, look at her clothes. Look at her. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. So we have a camera right now, we can take a picture or we can post it in Instagram and everybody will see how light the beating was to the point the skin was greener. However, the story continue and then Muhammad, the woman, she's coming to complain. What happened? Muhammad, he is the judge the man he came the women is there and now muhammad is being the just absolute justice man he is the perfect he is judge he is a judge judy which is a stupid judge uh, so now muhammad is there and the, the husband came so allah apostle you know uh, uh, he want to know what's uh, what's uh, what's wrong all right so look what she said the women uh, she said, by Allah, I have done no wrong. The woman is talking to him, which means to the husband. But he is impotent, which means he has a sexual problem. And is as useless 
to me as this, which means his penis, the same as Muhammad. You remember Muhammad, Allah, he gave him a verse, a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the Kothar. It's about a man, he, he accused him that he didn't have a penis. He cannot make babies. So she is saying the same uh, about her husband. And she was holding her clothes, that's mean his clothes, his private part, you know, is useless. Holding and showing the fringe of her clothes, all right, her garment. Abu Abdul Rahman, the husband said, by Allah, O Apostle, or Allah Apostle, she had told a lie. I am very strong and I can satisfy her. <laughs> look at the nice conversation and look how private Islam is. Who is Muhammad to talk about this anyway? Uh, but she is disobedient and want to go back to Rifa. So she is asking him, look like she is asking him to divorce her. Rifa is the previous husband. She is asking, divorce me, I don't want you. So he beat her. Now what Muhammad he said based on this, Muhammad he, he saw the two kids of Abdul Rahman from previous marriage and he said, well this guy he have kids, read with me, all right? Uh, Allah Apostle said to her, if that is your intention, then know that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless Abdul Rahman has sexual intercourse with you, all right? Actually it doesn't say that. In Arabic it says, and I will show you in the screen, it says, I will show you this hadith later in in different place with with the different translation. You see here it says, "Until he tests your juice," which is very filthy talk. How how a man can test the juice of the women? You tell me. All right, I'm not the one saying that. Here they are saying had sexual intercourse with you he did not say that and just after i finish this hadith i will show you uh, uh, the the hadith about this one now and then he look he says uh, uh, allah messenger he said two boys of abdul rahman and he asked them uh, those are your sons abdul rahman he said yes the prophet said you claim that what you claim which means he's saying to the women i.e that he is impotent or uh, impotent but by Allah, those boys resemble him. But those are not her, her kids. Maybe he was before having a beauty. Now he cannot have a beauty. It doesn't matter what it is. Let us say she is lying. But Muhammad, he took the side of the man he is beating the wife because she didn't want to sleep with him. Which means Muhammad is forcing this woman to be raped even by the husband. It's still a rape. When you force your wife to sleep with you, she is a wife or not, she is a woman who don't want to sleep with you, and that is rape. So Muhammad, he took the side. You will not see here, says to him, why you beat her, shame on you. Why you beat her until you make your skin, her skin her, you know, greener than her clothes? No. He took the side of the man blindly, and he did force her into sex with the husband. Now, we will take we will take this, uh, we want to search for this hadith about testing her juice all right you see here the translation change you see the fabrication of muslims the same story the same story suddenly the translation changed amazingly it's the same statement all right look what he said you cannot go back to him unless you taste his her, you know he, he tastes your sweetness and doesn't say even sweetness it is your juice again and he tastes and you taste his sweetness <laughs> and remember in the other translation they translate this as sexual intercourse that's mean about the penis and about the vagina excuse my language so islam it speak about the women as a sexual toy and the women she had to satisfy the husband and remember uh the, the, the hadith Muhammad he said if a woman she been asked by her husband to go to bed the angels of Allah will be cursing her until the morning let us see where we can find the hadith <clears throat> uh, Hadith, not only the husband he can beat her, 
even Allah and the angels will take the side of the man. So he will beat her as, and this is why actually the verse, chapter 4, verse number 34 was given because of this story, supposedly. And if a man, the messenger of Allah said, B B B B U H. I don't know. Is that a new uh, chemical? Anyway, said if a man calls his wife to bed, and she refuses, and thus he spends the night angry with her, the angels continue cursing her until the morning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? I don't want to use bad language. You know me, guys. I, I speak. I'm not. I'm not politically correct. I am not politically correct. I want to say things as it is. People like it, don't like it, I don't care. According to this hadith, a woman, she will be cursed by the angels until she take off her panties. As simple as that. I don't want to be rude and say until she open her legs. But this is how it is. This man, he had many wives. Listen carefully. This is not a Christian man who have one wife. This is a Muslim man who have God knows how many slaves and God knows how many wives and this one, she don't like it today. Well, you can go and have sex with the other one. No. You don't go with your husband. Allah will curse you. <laughs> That's deep. The angels will curse you. That's very deep. Allah, Allah himself is putting his nose between the legs of this woman until she open her legs and then Allah is satisfied and the angels will not curse her because Allah, he is using the angels of Allah as dogs. By the way, if you do not know, Allah, he have a dog, all right? If you remember the chapter of An-Najm where Allah, uh, Muhammad, he was speaking in front of somebody and he said, don't you believe in the, in the, in the God of An-Najm, which means the star? He said, no, I don't believe. He said to him, aren't you afraid Allah will send you the dog to eat you? Ooh, oh, you know, Allah have a dog? No problem. So if a woman, she don't open her legs, Allah curse her. What if the man, he don't want to sleep with the wife? Is Allah going to curse the man? Remember the women, she have only one husband. She cannot have 10 husbands. She can't replace him. Why if the women, she don't feel like it, Allah will curse her and the angels will curse her and the husband can beat her and everybody in the world against her. But if the man, he don't want to do it, it's okay. Actually, there is the, the story, I mean, I made a video about it, you know, where Muhammad, he, uh, he was going to divide, he was going to do to, uh, to uh, uh, divorce uh, Soda because she is getting old and fat and she, she had to give her day to Aisha, you know, she been forced to. She came to him, saying to him, "La don't don't divorce me." Let me see if I can find you the hadith fast. You see, I, I'm trying to make the videos short, but when I'm talking, uh, things come in my head. All right, here we go. Allah, he made a verse about it, just for the sake of Muhammad. He made a verse, as you see in the front of you, to sweet Muhammad that if a man, if a man, he can make an agreement with the wife. Muhammad, he is, uh, you know, uh, he have many wives. And there's one of them, he don't want to sleep with her. All right? So, what is the solution? Don't divorce me, please. Don't divorce me, I will be homeless. Even if you don't want to sleep with me, it's okay, just keep me. This is exactly what he did with Saudi bin Tudara. He did marry her when he needed her, and now it is time to dump her. All right? It's time to dump her. So don't marry me. And you know what? You don't have to, don't, don't divorce me, please. And if you want to speed, sleep with me, don't sleep with me. It's okay. You don't like me. I know that. I'm fat. I'm ugly. I'm etc. So don't sleep with me. But then divorce me, please. So they use women and they dump them when they are done with them. And as you see here, the story saying clearly that this is a story about Sauda bin Tudema. 
So the fear that the prophet SAW, now this is a new, new brand, SAW was going to divorce her. So she said, don't divorce me, but keep me and give me the day of, give my day to Aisha. And now Aisha, she will support that because Aisha, when she win more days of Muhammad to be in her house, she will win more money. When Muhammad is in a house, the gifts will come to that house. So now Aisha, she liked this idea, she will have two days more, which means one day more uh, uh, than the otherwise, which means two days more income will come. And she know that Aisha, she will support her for that for sure, so, so that she was trying to find a solution. How to stop this user who is abusing her and using her, and now because she's getting old, he wanna dump her in the street. How to stop him from that? So she said to her, she said to, said to him, don't divorce me, I will give my day to Aisha. Just tip me, please. She just want to survive. She don't want to be homeless. She don't want to, you know, at least she is the, still the, the wife of the prophet. And look what Muhammad did. He did not say, you know what? He didn't say, who told you I'm going to divorce you? I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to dump you. I'm not going to dump you when you get old and you have no family and you have nobody. No way. I'm not going to do that. No, he's silence. You see, she said to him, don't divorce me, but keep me and give my day to Aisha. So he S-A-W did so. He didn't say, I'm not going to divorce you. Which means it was true. Actually, there's some story that says he did really divorce her. But when she said that, Aisha, she asked him to let her stay as a wife. He don't need to sleep with her because she is given her day. Is that justice? Let us continue. This hadith, I don't want to talk about it long, but you remember it. Well, Muhammad, he said, most of hellfire, fire, they are women, and they will go to hellfire. Why? Because they are naqisatu aqlin wadeen. What naqisatu aqlin wadeen mean? According to Muhammad, they have deficiency in their brain. Now, I don't know how smart, how stupid people are, but uh, to say that women, they have deficiency, and especially with the reason he's talking about, is really stupid. Uh, uh, you can read the hadith, you know, uh, you can freeze the video, all right, and you can read it, you can mute the, uh, freeze the video, so you can read the whole story. I'm just trying to make the time short. Muhammad, he said, I saw most of you women, majority of you are going to be in hellfire. So the women, they said to him, why will we be in hellfire? What happened? What's wrong? All right, why will we be? The prophet replied, you curse frequently, frequently and you are ungrateful to your husbands. In spite of your lacking of wisdom, here we go. Muhammad is proving that women are wisdom. But this Abdul in this video trying to prove that Islam don't treat the women badly. And Islam does not believe that women, they are stupid. No. Yeah, come on. What a scam. So, regarding your wisdom, uh, what's wrong with the wisdom? What's wrong? Let us see. Uh, he said, in spite of lacking in your wisdom and failing in religion, <laughs> She have two accusation will take her to her fire. That is stupidity, lacking of wisdom. By the way, it is in Arabic. It says naqisatu aql. Naqisatu aql mean uh, uh, they have minus brain. Uh, they have uh, let us say uh, 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 a problem with their brain. You know, the word naqis is the opposite of uh, of uh, the positive. Like you know, you are minus. You know, you have you have uh, you have issue with your brain. You are stupid. So he's trying to prove that she is having a lack of wisdom. And we know that in, in the Bible, we have a prophets, they are women. And we have judges, judges who they are women. And we have women who saved the nation of Israel. And now he continue. And you are the breathing and the waste of man and intelligence. So now here we go, see, here we go. You are not the same as the man intelligence, you are stupid. Upon this, the women ask, what is our deficiency? So Muhammad is trying to prove to those women that they have deficiency, but because they are half a brain, they can't understand, brother. They cannot. They can't understand the super intelligence of Muhammad. So he said, regarding your, what about our uh, the, uh, the deficiency in our wisdom? Well, like how you can prove that? And our religion, he said, he replied, your lack, in wisdom, lack of wisdom can be will judge from the fact that evidence of two women are equal to one man. Oh, really? But this is not their fault. It's your Allah who put the rule. 
But as long as Allah put the rule who can question, that's mean Allah he know better, and Allah he decide that women are stupid and they are having a lack of wisdom. This guy in this video was trying to say about the same thing that women can't be a witness. He says not because uh, you know the women she is not stupid or etc. No, but because women they have a problems, uh, they have their period, and, you know, and they are weak. Blah, 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 blah. What? Hold on. This is what your prophet saying. Your prophet saying here that the, because of the lack of wisdom, they are stupid. This is why they cannot be witnesses equal to men. And by the way, women cannot be equal to be witness in Islam. Uh, at all and they can witness only in money transaction and to prove that so Muslims will not say to me I'm making things up this is Islam online so sorry, sorry Sunnah Sunnah online a very very much Muslim website all right this is sunnahonline.com and this is the article women in Islam versus women in judo whatever christian this is the story here and here they are saying the reason that women they cannot be witness, uh, uh, witnesses he said uh, the witnessing of women reduce them only to writing which means only they can be witness in the case of a uh, 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 like a money transaction writing a contract all right two women of those who you accept and they cannot be witnessing anything else all right and now he is trying to prove to you and if there is not two men, which means even if there's two women, the last choice to have two women as witnesses in the case of money transaction only, which means in the couple of uh, punishment, which means anything will lead to death, women cannot be uh, 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 witnesses. Now, there's many Islamic sects for sure, but we are talking about the majority. Some, some sect, they say in the case of uh, adultery, women, she can be a witness, but those are a few part of the Muslim say that only in the adultery. Why? Because women, she can be, she has, she can go to a bedroom uh, and see with the women what the women do, do but uh, maybe a man, he cannot do that. Maybe strangers, they cannot do that. So, but still, the Quran is very clear. Four witnesses who they are men, and this is the majority of the Muslims agree with that. Now here, he's trying to prove to you, and this is the verse. Here, if you go down, they are trying to prove to you that women don't have the same memory. Women, they are, they are, not, they are not smart. They have a stupid memory. This is why they aren't equal to a man. So I searched on the internet, just a little search, and I found this. Men memories were uh, are worse than women, especially with age. So it's proven by science that women, they have better memory, and the lies of the Quran is absolutely false. Women, they are not less in memory. Actually, if you take your wife, I said that many times, if you go with your wife to a party, and we ask you what you ate in that party, you will not remember, as all men don't. I don't remember what I ate yesterday. But most, but, but women, mostly, they will remember everyone in the party, even two months from now, they will remember what clothes they were wearing, they will remember the rings in their hands, they will remember the perfume, they will remember what they serve, they remember what who, who came after, who came before, so this is absolutely garbage and have no base. It is just base and discrimination. Let us continue. Uh, here he says that women, and the, the other reason that women have deficiency because they have their period. What? What? You forbid them from praying equal to men because when they have their period, they cannot. You forbid them from doing that. And you forbid them from fasting when they can. And you are actually the woman in Islam, she cannot fast without her husband's permission. So what is her, what is her fault? Is the woman is the one who created her uh, period? You are the one who said you cannot pray when you have a period. So she is being obedient here. Because she is obedient, she, she will not pray when she has period. You are going to say to her she will go to hell? That is the most stupid excuse ever come with someone claim to be a prophet. You are the one who put the rule saying to them, you cannot pray when you have your period. And when they are obedient, they don't pray when they are having period. You say to them, because of that, I will send you to hell. That is stupid and disgusting. Now we continue trying to make the video shorter. Three things disturb a Muslim prayer. What is that? A man praying, what is going to disturb him? Read with me. He said, uh, a woman, a donkey, and a black dog. 
Now here, you know Muhammad is a racist man. He hates the black color. So black dog is the one disturb you, but yellow dog or white dog is fine. It's okay, okay. All, but imagine here, Muhammad is making the women and the donkey and the black dog equal together in one line. Actually, Aisha, she said in one hadith, she said, well, you made us equal to dogs and donkeys. But yes, so this is what Muhammad said. This is what Muhammad said. Let us continue. Muhammad said, uh, Allah Messenger said, evil omen is in the women, the house and the horse. By the way, it doesn't say the horse, it says the female horse. All right? So, it is the women, it is the women, bad, bad luck, bad luck, come to you by three. By three. The and the evil, by the way, like but by the way, when you believe in the over omen, that's proof that you are you are you are weird too. Uh, you know, I don't know if translation is correct. You know, in Arabic, uh, a shum a shum is uh, somebody can cause bad luck to happen. You know, like just by, just by presenting there, like the Muslim believe a black crow can cause you a bad luck. Why? Because it's black. As simple as that. All right. Uh, so a woman just her existence can cause you, you know, uh, you know, she's a bad luck. Actually, Muhammad he said, uh, women they come in the image of the devil. Let me show you. And she live in the image of the devil. There we go. There's many hadith anyway, you know. Muhammad said, a woman, this is, this is how the story, a woman, she walked by and she made Muhammad horny. So he went to her, he, he left her friend, his friends in front of his house. He was staring at the women who walk, walk by the house. Imagine how pretty he is. He is staring at her body until he gets so excited to the point he cannot wait no more. He left his friends and he went inside and he found his wife Zainab making a bread. So he forced her to take off her panty and start doing bing bong. And then when he came back, look what he said. The women advanced and retires in the shape of the devil. So he is not the devil, it is the women. What, what the women did, she did nothing. A woman walking down the street. He is the one who get horny. He is the one who was staring at her body. Otherwise, how he get horny, right? And now she is the devil. So Muhammad always present the women as an in the in one image. She's a stupid. She is nothing. She is dummy. She is a sex toy. And even after we use them as sex toys, they are the devils. They are not good. They are not good. They are bad. All right. And this is the the hadith. And by the way, this is a strong hadith. So the Muslims cannot say this is not not uh, not good. Uh, what else? Uh, I mean, I think that's enough. That's enough. So I say to the Abdus who they are in this video, you got busted. And Christian Prince is the best to get you busted. Please download this video, share it with your friends. Feel free to download my video, share it anywhere you want. But don't forget to tell them uh, who is the one who did it. It's me. I am a Christian prince and I approve this message. If you like to read more and to learn more about the scam of Islam and the cult of Islam, please feel free to read my books. You can find them in Amazon.com. You can search in Amazon for my name, Christian Prince, as it is, Christian Prince, and you will find my books. God bless and thank you very much. <laughs> لا يملك إنسان أن ينكره لأن الذي شرعه هو الذي خلق هذا الإنسان ولأنك يا عبد الله إذا اشتريت جهاز أو سيارة تعطى دليل كتالوج يبين لك طريقة الاستخدام فالذي خلق الإنسان هو الذي أنزل هذا الكتاب ليبين الإنسان الخطى والطريق الذي ينبغي أن يسلكه ولن نستحي أمام أمم الأرض في أيام جهلها أن نقر أن هذا من شريعته وأن نذكر الغافلين الجهلة من أبناء أمة الذين ساروا في ركاب القوم أن القوم اليوم يعترفون بهذا الإعجاز في هذه الآية 
بالإعجاز في هذه الآية فإن من النساء أصناف ثلاث لا يمكن أن تستقيم الحياة معها إلا بالضرب واضربوهن في هذه الآية إعجاز أن أصناف ثلاثة من النساء لا يمكن أن يعيش معها رجل إلا والعصا على عاتقه المرأة الأولى فتاة الرب يدعى لها يطلب منها أن تذهب للمدرسة فتمتنع يضربوها كلي لا أريد يضربوها هكذا اعتادت على الضرب تربت على هذا فنسأل الله أن يعين زوجها عليها بعد ذلك ولن يستقيم معها إلا إذا كان ضرابا للنساء والمرأة الثانية امرأة متعالية مترفع على زوجها لا تحسب له حساب هذه أيضا لا تستقيم إلا بالعصر والمرأة الثالثة امرأة فيها انحراف لا تقتنع بقوة رجلها إلا إذا قهرها وإلا إذا ضربها وإلا إذا انتصر عليها عضليا وهزمها بصوته 